Greetings everyone. In this short video we're going to go through creating an API manually using the portal and we'll do some testing of that API as well. Um, and just behind the scenes in, in case you're interested the main ones we're looking at is uh, a sample project we've used uh, before in the past that you'll see some other videos for um, reference architecture but uh, in particular we have a simple home controller and we have a test uh, method here that's going to return remote IP uh, is kind of the main thing we'll look at here. Okay, um, and this is already hosted out on Azure, and we'll look at that in just a second. But let's go ahead and jump into the portal. So in the portal, we're going to go to our API instance, uh, excuse me, API management instance that we created earlier. And again, if, if you don't see it on the top, you can always go to My Services and then go to Web, and then click on API management. And there's our instance here. So most of what we're going to be doing today uh, in this particular video is underneath the API sections. Before we add a new API with all of these options, let's look at the, one of the existing ones that come with it. This is just called the Echo API. It's included out of the box. You'll probably want to delete this. Uh, it's definitely not in production. Uh, but it's good for you to get an idea of how it works with this one. It's mostly a pass-through to this URL you can see over here, Echo App. So start with it in general. This is your API. And what we will see in a minute was in the design was all the operations. But in settings, this is where you give it the name that we see on the left, and then that back end base URL that's behind the scenes, um, as well as some of our other parameters, what products we want this to be associated with, which we'll talk about that in another video, and the format of whether we require a subscription key and the format of those. Right, and whether we want to link this up to uh, application insights or implement additional security on that API if we have those configured. So in the design view, th that applies to all. So in the design view, these are all of the operations here. And with each operation, obviously, they, they'll be most likely get, get post, put, delete, head, patch, uh, standard HTTP verbs. Uh, and then they'll define what either their incoming and outcoming uh, results are or, and, and uh, what they expect is request and response um, and you can see those defined here front end back end in this case we could edit this and manually enter in uh, our parameters if we had those which in this case we do and some default values right All right so I'm gonna go ahead and go back out of here the main goal for this this section is we're going to uh, go ahead and create a couple of new APIs so first things first we're going to choose a blank API, and we're going to call this manual API, just for now, because uh, we're manually creating it. Um, the backend web service, uh, let me grab that from another window, um, is going to be this. Uh, and um, we're going to have a manual be our, our name there. I'll go ahead and have this home, because we're only going to append a little bit on there. So let's go ahead and create that. And we're going to go ahead and create an operation within there. Right? So the name of that operation um, is, let's just call this test. Right? And the get on this is test. Because it's everything else we've uh, in, the, in that URL plus test. Right? And we don't have a query string, we don't have a request. We could read a response as JSON. I know that's going to be a JSON response. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, and if all is well, we should be able to go over to our test tab here, um, bypass cores, bypass cores, and we should be able to execute this test. And there's our result. So in fact, it did go through there, and it does know that our request came from this uh, API management server, and that's uh, that's the address of this server. Okay, and that's the URL that was requested to that backend app. And just to show you real quick that backend URL, and we're going to come back to look at this in, in a minute as we in the future when we lock it down. It's really just this. Now if I access it directly you can see I'm accessing that URL but I'm coming from a different IP. Right so um, that's what we're doing here in just this simple case. Pretty good, pretty simple, no big deal. And if you remember correctly we did go ahead and by default it does on the settings it does require the subscription key. It doesn't use that here in the admin tool but we'll see that on the uh, testing with Postman in just a moment. All right, so now we've got one manually created. Um, let's go ahead and, and that particular web app that I was showing you is fully implemented with Swagger uh, in the dev environment, and I have my Swagger file implemented. 
Uh, it's running .NET 5, um, and it, that has a version 3 of OpenAPI, which unfortunately there's some caveats there. So let's go ahead, and, and what I mean by that is with OpenAPI here, this is what we're going to be using, for 2.2 and, and, and those, you can specify the URL here, but for, for the one I'm looking at, 3, unfortunately that doesn't work. So we're going to choose a file that I have on my desktop that is that definition. Right, it's that Swagger JSON, and when it when it read the file, it knows what what that project and definition was. I'm going to slightly rename this here in the app, so I'll know. And we're going to give this a slash import as our whoops, we don't need the slash, my bad. And that's going to be what we come from as our reverse proxy URL for the API gateway. So let's go and create that. Now it'll include everything in the definition. We're going to look at some crazy stuff here in a minute that it included. Before we do that though, it's always important in this case, it doesn't know your backend URL. So I actually need to put that URL in here. And that's kind of where everything's going to start from for what it knows is the backend. So I'm going to save that. Great. Now with that, um, just real quickly, in the API, for example, um, here, with our reference architecture, we, we show essentially how you can define with your code your respect, request, response, uh, just by attributes, right? And essentially document your URI, your uh, API within your code. So what, what that results in is everything that we're going to see out here because we've imported that Swagger definition. Now if we go and look at one of those, let me move this to the side and for example, this read. Here's the two responses we have. It'll know how, what the definition of that is, what it takes as an input. And a lot of this will be surfaced in the, in the developer portal that we'll look at later on. Like really nice, very nice presentation. So it is represented here. So we're just going to go ahead and call this one. So if I go to settings, uh, just to verify, yep, we do have our back end URL. We'll go ahead and test this guy. And I know there should be a record number one back there. And um, let's turn off cores, and we should be able to execute. And there's our record from the database from that backend API. That's great. Okay, so we've actually gone all the way through there um, and, and made that request for both of those. So let's just take a quick look at what those look like in um, Postman. Right, so the first one we, 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 we saw when we accessed that URL directly for the manual one, the manual one directly URL was this. Right, and it knows we're coming to it from this remote IP. That's my desktop IP for now. Now, if we go through the API gateway, I need to go grab the URL. That's going to look like this, right? Now, if I just paste this in and try to go to the gateway in this case, we should get an error saying access denied because we said you have to put a subscription key on there. So what are the couple ways to put a subscription key? Now those are configurable and we've configured them on settings. So we got a couple of different names. So let's try the header. We'll use the header first. So we go back to Postman. And again, you can change this on per API. It's for all of the operations within the API. Okay, so as it turns out, we need to set this to a, a, an actual product. We didn't have a product assigned, so it didn't matter what subscription key we'd use. So if we update the product there with the element, we'll come back to products later. Uh, we should be able to access it now. We have a product associated with that. Whoops, I'm sorry. And there's our response coming from the server. Now let's go ahead and take a look at using the query string parameter the same way and grab that query string parameter and instead of taking the header there uh, let's go to parameters query string I'm gonna grab that same header uh, it's turned off and we go to parameters and there we go if we turn it off it, it, it will fail again All right great now we could do the same thing with with the other API that that's that's neither here nor, here nor there uh, it will behave the same way but let's go ahead and, and let's turn this back on and we know we're coming from this URL and this is the IP of the gateway now this is kind of a last and just an extra thing and a lot of times you don't want to be able to go to this back end URL anymore you want to close this off so what do you want to do so in this case this is a little bit outside the scope of, of what we're doing but if we go to our app service in this case our sample app and go to networking right? 
and we could go to restrict access and for this one this is the application we can go ahead and add a rule where we um, only allow the API management right and let's go ahead and give that a one um, I'm going to post in his IP address there um, I think most of the other stuff we should be able to get good with we save this it should deny everything else once it's saved alright we have that rule and we're, we're allowing everything so if we go ahead and now go back to postman and try to access it here we should have a failure right which we do okay it's blocked but now if we go through the API management we should be able to access the API management still successfully which we did um, so that's just a quick way of how you want to secure it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll, the next couple of videos will be about subscriptions, users, and groups, and we'll go from there.